No By Heart is a vibrantly atmospheric, open-world narrative, low-poly adventure game that sucks you in. It uses the thoughts of your character to see how he really feels about every conversation he has while being accompanied by the beautiful atmosphere around him. It's also a love story about a childhood girl who the main protagonist fell in love with that just so happens to be in town for a week, making the monotony of your boring job fade away. In this point-and-click adventure, you can interact with objects just like every single point-and-click adventure game to ever exist. While it is kind of a staple of the genre as a whole, it makes sense for this game considering the whole time of the character's existence is plagued by his own thoughts, <laughs> relatable, which you'll tend to still faintly hear even if you zoom out while your inner monologue is talking. Also, uh, don't accidentally click on the same item multiple times, otherwise you'll get the same dialogue on repeat, which happened to me a few times at a few places in town. Regarding the mysterious town, which you are always running in to save you at least a little bit of time, over time you get more map pieces is to better understand the landscape of the town slowly over time instead of having this big map that you attempt to learn all at once so i appreciate the small map bits over time because i'm bad at processing a bunch of info at once memories are a key part of this town which are known in the form of red leaves on the ground and every single level you can spot these sections while traveling sometimes they're optional other times they are mandatory to progress the story forward this is mostly to do with the first and last level of the game because of spoilers this game is split into seven different days one for each day of the week that the love interest is in town. Each day has its highlight. Some situations keep happening, others were only available for one of the days. Some days I had no gripes with, others I had some negative thoughts about. Day one was the introduction of the main character, Misha, first as a boy in a dream state, and then as an adult with a typewriting job at a train station, where you have to type this passenger's email, <laughs> email? <laughs> passenger's name in the typewriter so they can board the train. Which while at first I found it very slow using the controller for this, and was originally going to make the point of the typewriter makes you feel like this job is very slow and mundane. Once I realized that I could use the keyboard for the section, I found it vastly faster, plus it makes it feel more realistic. This day also introduces you to the fact of, you can't be everywhere at once. Basically, there's one of two options happening at once, and it will mostly come down to, well, pick one and see what happens. This gives the illusion of multiple choices, but it always loops back around to a narrative point to where it really only leads down to one path. Most of the day has Misha and Asya, the love interest, spending time in the park with the red leaves to remember the good times. Day two is all about family. These family events are especially in the form of finding photos for a family present, which turns into not only a puzzle that is used basically every day, revealing more about the past, the more you piece together, but that it's also an excuse to do an errand for a family member like watching school kids for a teacher while she grabs the photo, or you could do the opposite of helping and just steal your uncle's car. Another major family event was Aunt Galia's party, where she made tea for everyone while you helped out. This transpired into a little mini game that's only in day two, where you get to put in ingredients for each person's tea. Which reminds me of another indie game that I'm still waiting for the sequel on so I can ma make a sequel video. This is where you also give Aunt Galia the family album that you've been working on this entire day. While this next one isn't that major, it left gears turning in my brain of past choices actually influencing the story by using your uncle being possibly mad at you for a decision you made yesterday, which I wasn't expecting my decision to carry over between days, but this one did. After that, the whole debacle of family drama happening, which of course happens at a family event as if it's an episode of Succession. He meant to say was that he wished that mom gave birth to a can opener because at least then it would be useful. Misha and Asya decided to sit on the roof and talk while Misha is attempting to confess how he feels about Asya. This scene was a beautiful moment at the end of the day and helps connect these two characters even closer than the first day. Now day three is where things start shifting into a more mysterious light. The first victim was the ant who lost her memory of Almaz, Misha's cousin. You try to help the ant, but instead she yeets the photo album you gave her yesterday out of the window. You know, you, you spent all day working on that? No, she just, she just gets rid of it. Cool. It was only yesterday that she was completely fine, but now something isn't right. The second victim was Art Artyom? Artyom? I could be saying that wrong. Anyways, the second victim was Archia, which I believe is Misha's brother, though to be honest there's a lot of family members in this game so it can get confusing at times. But anyways, Artyom doesn't know who Misha is. After attempting to leave on the train, which doesn't stop, 
and people almost die. Th that was very intense. Anyways, Artyom steals a bus with some other townsfolk and leaves us behind. The town itself is now obsessed with not only a helicopter that appears out of nowhere, but a weird flu epidemic. I'm doing air quotes here, but you can't see it because it's just my voice. Which is why they're taking blood samples of the townsfolk. The entire time this is going on, Misha is looking for Asya, who's missing. So you gotta run all over town to find her like a chicken with its head cut off. Asya is finally found near the childhood tree that was mentioned in the first day, which makes sense because of the fact that this was the tree that they grew up with as kids that they would always play around. Day four is mostly from the perspective of Almas, who last night rang your doorbell and asked to stay the night. This was a nice change of pace, though I was conflicted because I liked Misha and wanted to get to know more about him. Since by this point, I'm grown a connection to this thoughtful man. Yeah. You get it? Anyways, no matter my feelings, it made sense for story progression, since now you had the perspective of memories from a different person. This then cements the idea in your brain that although we can be in the same space, we all have different memories about the common space. From Almaz's perspective as well, we see a mother forget her child. The dialogue leads to a hug with the mom, and I decided to give her an extra long hug just to see what happens, which ended up being a lot of dialogue going a lot longer than I was expecting. The scene is very packed with emotional words and shows how holding on to those you love is important. The other half of the day was from the guard's perspective. You get punked by punks in the most cinematic scene in the entire game. Bash it! You asked for it! One more time! Okay, that's enough for him. Big! Gotta scrub! Which I kinda wish was in the entire game to make it more fluid in motion, yet if it was all the time, it wouldn't be as special. So, I appreciate this moment so much. You also take one of the kids in the gang back to the orphanage, which is on fire. Which, while you get the choice of helping or not, I chose to save the kids from the burning building because I have a soul! Day five is back in action as Misha. This day is basically the camp day where you and some soldiers move supplies to a basketball court. While this is happening, Asha was telling a story to the children to keep them and the players entertained with a cute tale. After all the supplies are moved, Misha and Asya go back to Misha's apartment. While you think you're going to have a fun night in, you're instead thrown for a surprise that you least expect. Because again, family drama. What do you have against me? Nothing. Nothing? Oh, you want me to actually say? Yes, I do. Asya gets a call from her father and then leaves abruptly, revealing to us that Asya has forgotten who her father is, which meant that the town's virus was spreading. Misha attempts to chase after her, but because of the town being in a mandatory curfew, oh, as well as a quarantine and lockdown, cause yes, of course this game has a freaking quarantine, my gosh. This leads us to one of the best scenes in the game, the late night thoughts. Misha tries so hard to rationalize everything that's happening in this town with words flying everywhere as you're attempting to ground yourself in reality with these ideas. This is honestly one of the most relatable scenes I've seen so far, where your brain is swimming in ideas at late hours trying to make sense of it all. Very cool dynamic added to the game, which is only available in this sort of way on day five. Day six is where Asya starts to become infected herself. If I forget you all, I'd rather be alone. Which, oh yeah, Misha's uncle doesn't recognize either of them either. This means that the town has now been infected even more and everyone is starting to become affected in some sort of way. <coughs> oh, maybe I'm catching the virus, gosh. This leads Misha to try so hard for Asya to remember her life in this very foggy day, making this town feel very eerie and desolate. The more memories you show to Asya, the less she remembers which is a terrifying idea. Seeing the person you love the most going through major lapses in memory on the spot. After Misha attempts for so long to help Asya, we get this very metaphorical and symbolic portrayal at the end of the day. Water is filling up the space slowly until we get consumed. 
which is a metaphor for the town slowly being eaten away by the disease until everyone becomes a stranger. Took me a little bit to figure this one out, but that's what I gleaned from it. Day 7 is painful. Everyone is a stranger. The map is torn up again, signifying how quote-unquote new this place has become. Redacted doesn't remember you anymore, and you basically become labeled a stalker of Redacted if you even attempt to reason with her. You, of course, remember everyone, but nobody remembers you. Wow, that's, uh... Oh, yeah, that's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. This leads you to the train station with either one of two choices, leaving this place behind and starting anew, or staying, changing nothing more, and basically living in a shell of a town that you once knew. I'm honestly conflicted about this game. On one hand, the journey was really good, the characters were lively and memorable, the family drama felt impactful, like Succession. Yes, I've been watching Succession, it's such a freaking good show, oh my god! I don't feel anything. <laughs> it's a mental disorder, it's called borderline personality disorder. Why is everybody laughing? The relationship between Misha and Redacted was adorable, and there were different minigames in each day, and different tasks to do which made gameplay enjoyable. On the other hand, it's a pretty long game which makes you not want to play it again and get a new ending. The ending left us with a lot of questions that aren't answered, which I don't know whether this is intentional or not, and I don't know if choices actually matter in the game since there are basically only two endings from what I found. No matter how I personally feel about No By Heart, the game was about a distant girl who was in the town again for a little bit of time, the mental regrets of speech people can have regarding past mistakes, and that this game can be relatable to people who find themselves in their own thoughts a lot of the time. It's definitely a game where the journey was more enjoyable than the actual ending. To some, that's a deal breaker. But for me personally, the story was about how our choices matter. We can't change the past, but we can do our best to keep moving forward. We can learn from our mistakes to make our present the best it can be.